If you're here because you're an avid 720 RPM auto rifle fan, then buckle up. Because the new seasonal auto rifle, Sweet Sorrow, is the best 720 we have in the game for both PvP and PvE. And after hearing the four big reasons why, I think you'll enjoy it just as much as I do. As I just mentioned, the Sweet Sorrow is the new seasonal 720 RPM auto that you can obtain from the chest at the end of the Psy Ops Battleground mission or by focusing your Umbro Engrams at the helm. You can also fully craft Sweet Sorrow when you collect five Deep Sight Resonance versions of the weapon. For PvE, 720 auto rifles aren't anything special as SMGs can basically function the exact same way and are way more lethal. Crate, which is also a new 720 auto, has the Viced Origin trait, which has a chance to reload your weapon whenever you do damage, which is obviously a really solid intrinsic perk for PvE. However, Sweet Sorrow is able to roll with the enhanced versions of the exact same PvE perks that you would be seeking on Crate. With one of the seasonal champion mods being Overload Auto Rifles, it might be time to consider stashing away a solid PvE roll of this weapon, which honestly shouldn't be that hard to come by. For PvP, 720 autos have an optimal TTK of 0.77 seconds and a relatively fast body shot TTK of 1.17 seconds. With something like Kill Clip active, you can actually knock those times down to 0.6 seconds and 0.83 seconds respectively. These autos will comfortably sit in the lower mid-range of weapons in the game and play very well on a majority of the short to mid-range maps we currently have in PvP. So what separates Sweet Sorrow from all the other 720 RPM auto rifles and more specifically one of the most popular 720s, Chroma Rush? Well, there are four major categories that make Sweet Sorrow the better option. All four of these categories are major factors in how the weapon performs, but only one of them is identifiable in the game. Starting out, we've got the reticle zoom. If you're unaware of how zoom affects weapon range, let me give you a TLDR. The higher the zoom magnification on a weapon, the longer its effective range is. So in the case of Sweet Sorrow and Chroma Rush, we notice that Chroma Rush has 16 zoom and Sweet Sorrow has 17 zoom. Okay, one more zoom, big deal, right? Actually, yeah, it kind of is. That slight increase in zoom adds about one and a half meters onto the base range of the weapon. Without any perks added or anything, Sweet Sorrow just straight up has more range right out of the box than Chroma Rush. And what this allows us to do is instead of specking for all range perks to juice that effective range up, we can now spec into other things like stability, handling, or recoil direction. Speaking of, let's talk about recoil direction. So on rapid frame weapons, recoil direction is a very important statistic to spec into. Obviously with more bullets it's being shot consecutively, the weapon becomes naturally more difficult to handle. The thing is, recoil direction isn't a stat that you can observe in the game. You have to use third party sites like light.gg, d2 gunsmith, or destiny item manager to even see what your weapon's recoil direction is. It can be kind of confusing to interpret what the recoil stat means because you would think that it's a linear stat, meaning the higher your recoil stat direction is, the more stable your weapon becomes. Well, that's only partially the case. Recoil direction has a range of zero to 100. Anytime your weapon ends in a value of five, that means your recoil direction will be vertical. If your recoil direction ends in a zero through four, your weapon will kick to the left with varying degrees based on its value. Anytime that number ends in a six through nine, your weapon kicks to the right. In other words, the second number value in your recoil direction indicates the direction your weapon will kick. The first number is going to indicate the severity of that kick. The higher value your recoil direction is, the more manageable it will be to sustain accuracy in a gunfight. Now, circling back to why this is important on a weapon like Sweet Sorrow and Chroma Rush. What separates these two autos is that you can achieve a maximum recoil direction of 100 on Sweet Sorrow, whereas on Chroma Rush, you can only achieve a max of 90. And if you remember from earlier, since that value ends in a zero, the weapon is going to pull harshly to the left whenever you fire. Both of these stats are achieved using the counterbalance mod, which gives plus 15 to recoil direction. So what you'd end up doing is taking the counterbalance mod off which then knocks the recoil down to a 75. And unless you're really experienced with rapid frame weapons, 75 can be quite a shock, especially on controllers. So not only would you have a weapon that kicks hard, but you'd also have a weapon with low range since you've specced into recoil direction. On Sweet Sorrow, if you spec for Arrowhead Break, which grants plus 30 recoil direction, and you apply a counterbalance mod, you'll manage to max out that recoil stat to 100. And where you really feel the 100 recoil direction is on the top end of its effective range. It's much easier to manage when you're pushing that 25 to 26 meter mark. Another factor that plays a part in how a weapon feels is aim assistance. And Sweet Sorrow is superior to Chroma Rush in this category as well. Even though it's only by one point, 
It's still reassuring to know that you're not totally losing value by placing a counterbalance mod over a target adjusting mod. It's super helpful to have high aim assistance on weapons that require you to continuously shoot, as when you're trying to constantly track your target, that stickiness is what makes it so your aim doesn't get pulled off the screen. For PvE, this is a pretty minor aspect of gameplay, but for PvP, you can certainly tell the difference between a weapon that has high aim assistance versus low aim assist. Okay, so to recap so far, Sweet Sorrow takes the crown in zoom, which leads to more range, recoil direction, which can get maxed out to 100, and aim assistance to add to the weapon's stickiness. But the icing on the cake is that you can hand select whatever perks you want to fit your playstyle in PvP. I mean, you could totally ignore everything I just said and go for all range perks if you really wanted to. But the fact that you don't have to spend all season trying to focus a single umbral engram to maybe get all five perk slots to your liking is just the most satisfying feeling. I was fortunate enough to land five deep sight versions of Sweet Sorrow, so I've been testing out a few different variations of my favorite roles. Let me show you. So obviously I've been rocking a range masterwork with arrowhead break for that plus 30 recoil direction and accurized rounds to bump that range stat even more. Now for the next perks, keep in mind that there are regular perk options and also the enhanced versions of those perk options. Most of the enhanced versions will typically give increased durations to whatever the benefits are that they are providing. Others may also include minor stat bumps to any of the weapons based stats. Those perks should indicate whether or not they do this. But if you're trying to spec into the whole max stability feel of the weapon, I think tap the trigger is the unquestioned selection in the last column. It not only affects the initial stability of the weapon, but it also affects recoil direction kick and accuracy cone size, all of which will make it feel very good. If you were using this for a specific build, you could go Vorpal Weapon or Demolitionist in this column as well, but I think Tap the Trigger is going to give you the most benefit over a consistent period of time. For the third perk column, I think there's probably three options that you could go for, and it depends on your playstyle and how you intend to use it. First and foremost, Killing Wind is a really good option as it is a post-kill perk. It grants 20 range, 50 mobility, 40 handling, and and a 30% reduction in ADS movement penalty. Every single one of the benefits are engagement altering for Sweet Sorrow. You get about three meters or so added to its effective range, you get your handling stat almost maxed out, and you get to strafe faster when you're ADSing and shooting. Killing Wind is going to be best utilized if you plan on playing very aggressively. So if you know that your playstyle is one where you're a little bit more passive, then maybe something like Pulse Monitor might be more up your alley. Pulse Monitor is another great option with its recent rework. Your weapons now get reloaded and you get plus 45 handling and a 5% faster swap speed whenever you get under 38 shields. The enhanced version states the same thing but says it activates when you're lightly wounded. I wasn't able to test what exactly lightly wounded meant as I'm currently feeling the effects of the Ascendant Alloy Depression we're in, but I would assume that it's probably somewhere around a 10 to 15% buff. The enhanced version of Pulse Monitor was so good that it actually triggered the anti-cheat for some accounts, causing them to get banned due to how much ammo was being overflown into their magazine. Bungie has since removed the overflow buff from it. But Pulse Monitor would be a great option for people that plan on quickly switching to secondary weapons to finish off kills. And with its recent tweak, now procs much more frequently. Lastly, if you're just really wanting to go all in on stability, you could try out Perpetual Motion. Because of the nature of rapid frame weapons, you're likely going to be in short to mid ranged gunfights, meaning you're likely going to be moving around the map a bunch. Perpetual Motion is perfect for a weapon like Sweet Sorrow because it stays activated even when you don't have the weapon equipped. You can switch to a shotgun or a sniper, and as long as you're moving, you can maintain its buffs. Now, something else that's unique about Sweet Sorrow that normally doesn't attract my dull PvP brain is the perks that you can get on it for PvE. I mean, we're talking great perks for just regular daily PvE stuff, and even stuff for high-end PvE content. The one that jumps out to me right away is the new perk Stats for All, in combination with One for All. The synergy here is incredible, because Stats for All literally gives you a stat bump to every major category except for impact, range, stability, handling, and reload. Pairing that with one for all, which grants the bonus damage when you activate it, now you've got every single stat being buffed just for hitting three separate targets. It feels incredible in normal PvE activities. Another interesting combination that I'm wanting to try out is triple tap and another new perk, Focused Fury. I think of Focused Fury as a knockoff version of Hawkmoon's exotic perk. Dealing precision damage with half of the magazine will grant bonus weapon damage. This is obviously very synergistic with Tap the Trigger because you return ammo to your magazine anytime you get precision hits with your weapon. Notice that it says hits and not kills. So theoretically, you could shoot for quite a while and deal some extra damage if you were sustaining those precision hits. 
Keep an eye out for this combo. You could also go with the tried and true triple tab Vorpal option or an auto loading Vorpal option as well if you're just looking for a low entry type of damage buff. Then there's always the demolitionist builds that you could try out, especially with the new hunter exotics Renewal Grasps. You could absolutely spam dusk field grenades all over the place and become an absolute tank in whatever you're playing. I'm thinking about doing a video for these gauntlets for both PvP and PvE, so if you're interested in that, tap the subscribe button. I do want to make sure and mention the origin trait for Sweet Sorrow, Land Tank. It states that final blows with this weapon will grant increased resilience and add additional damage resistance from combatants. What I was able to gather is that it doesn't have too much of an impact with normal combat to combat engagements, but I would assume that the increased resilience is somewhere around or equal to about one resilience tier. In other words, you could probably run tier one resilience if you were desperate for stats somewhere else, but I don't think it's that significant of a buff that you should be specking for it in your build. Speaking of builds, I made a build video recently going over how you can infinitely loop your invisibility in PvP. That video should be showing up on your screen right now. Thanks for watching, and as always, we'll see ya.